Given AI's ability to excel at things like pattern recognition, it makes a lot of sense to leverage AI and ML capabilities in the area of entity resolution. That being said, its use needs to be exposed in a simple manner. The last thing you want is having to use an expensive data scientist every time you want to tweak your model. In this video, you'll learn about Match IQ, an area in the Raltio platform where we use advanced AI and ML to perform entity resolution. What you'll see in today's demonstration is the end-to-end -end configuration of the Match IQ process to give you a sense of the ease of use. While you'll see how to set this up from scratch, Raltio already provides pre-trained models in life sciences for our customers to use, with models for other industries coming soon. Configuration of Match IQ consists of four simple steps. Step 1 is the prep step, where I tell Raltier which entity type to focus on and which attributes to use in the model. Step 2 is where I train the model via simple yes-no answers based on being presented with pairs of records to compare. Step 3 allows me to review some candidates to confirm my model is working well. And then in step 4, I can deploy the model into my tenant where it'll go to work to identify duplicates. I'm now in the Raltio console, which is my window into all the configuration options in my Raltio tenant. I'll navigate to Match IQ from here. In the Match IQ console, I can see my entity types listed on the left side. I'm going to create my ML model on the organization entity. So I'll pick that entity and then click on Add New to add a model for this entity type. I'll call my model Organization ML Match and I'll select Name, Address 1, city, state, and zip code to use in my model. I could choose any attributes here, but obviously I want to focus on those attributes that provide some sort of demographic or identifying information. Once I click Create, Match IQ goes off and starts preparing the data for my next step, which is training. Once the data prep step is complete, I'll receive an email notification that I can now train the model. Here you can see the model is now sitting in the training swim lane. In order to activate the training session, I can just click on Train to set up my session. Because training sessions are started on demand to optimize resources, I can wait here until my training window appears, or I can elect to receive an email notification when it's ready for action. The training phase itself is very simple. I'm now presented with pairs of records. My job is to simply say yes, these are the same, or no, they're not. If I'm not sure, I can elect to skip that question by clicking on not sure. This type of training is known as active learning because I am teaching the model how to recognize duplicates with every iteration I complete. Note, I don't have to specify what makes a match pair the same or different. I just have to say yes, no, or not sure. I can end the training session at any time, or I can elect to come back and continue training later. Typically, I would answer about 100 questions in order to train the model efficiently. But the beauty of this process is I can train the model in an iterative fashion. And once I start gathering some feedback from users, I can adjust accordingly. After training, the model enters the review step. When it comes to reviewing the output of the model, I have two options. I can either download a random selection of matched records within the tenant for review, or I can upload a file via the model review job to perform a comparison against an external set of records. Here you can see an example of the spreadsheet output if I elect to download the results. The matched pairs are represented below each other in the color-coded bands in this example. Each match pair contains the entity ID, the number of matches each record has, an explanation as to why a match was found, the calculated relevance score, and then the attributes we selected for our model to aid in our analysis. A quick glance over these allows me to see that our model seems to be working fairly well in terms of picking up possible duplicates, and this gives me enough confidence to move my model to the next step so it can get to work detecting duplicates within our tenant. I can now click on Approve to move the model to the last step. Once here, I'm ready to publish it into my tenant, I could place it back into review if I wanted, or I could push it all the way back to the training step. As part of publishing the model into my tenant, I can now fine-tune the type of actions the model should now take. For example, is this model for matching only data contained within the tenant, or is it also available to be used as part of the external match process? Should it use all the source values in the match process, or only the rendered operational best values per attribute? Should it create potential matches only, 
or should it be automatically merging? Or should it be a combination of both? What should the allowable match thresholds be that drive the decisions? These thresholds tie back to the relevance scores you saw earlier when we were reviewing the sample data. The typical approach here is to create only potential matches at first at a fairly high threshold until users are comfortable that the model is well tuned. Then we can come in and adjust accordingly. Once I hit save, my model is now published into my tenant and it can get to work. Let's now jump into the Reltio UI and look at a few match results. In this first example, we can see three possible matches for this record from Northrop Grumman. The first match was found using both the match rules and match IQ. Note the little match IQ symbol in the match method swim lane. The other two matches on the right side don't have a match IQ icon, meaning only the rules detected those as possible matches. This is a good indication that our match IQ model is not overmatching, at least based on this example. An interesting concept here is that you're seeing results from both the match rules and the ML model. This is actually a good thing and can actually be used as a means to gain more confidence in the ML model. In the next example, we again see multiple cases where in one scenario, the rules and the ML model are in agreement and in the other two cases, only a rule caught the match and those matches look a little bit weak. Again, a good indication that our model seems to be working very nicely. Let's assume for a second that I've gathered this type of feedback across our user base and I'm now ready to automate some of these potential match decisions via Match IQ. Back in the Match IQ app under Manage Publish, I can now change the settings that control the match thresholds. For example, I can now specify that the system can automatically merge any matches between a 0.95 and 1 relevance score, effectively a score of between 95% and 100%. And then we'll keep our potential match threshold between 80 and 95 or 0.8 and 0.95. Hit save, and just like that, Reltier can now begin to automate all matched records sitting at that 95 to 100 relevance score via Match IQ. What you just saw in this demonstration was the end-to-end -end process to configure and deploy the ML-based matching capabilities of the Reltier platform, what we call Match IQ. Like what you saw in this video? Keep watching this series to see more demos of our product in action or contact us for a complimentary consultation with our team. Thanks for watching.